Tecmo Bowl was an innovative game that blew all the other NES football games out of the water. It wasn't even close. Was there any way for a sequel to be able to outdo it? Well, let's see what Tecmo Super Bowl has to offer. It starts off with a cool little intro that pans down from the upper view of a stadium to the ground level, and then shows some in-game sequences with a badass song playing in the background, letting you know right from the start that this game means fucking business. And just to prove that, Tecmo went all out and got the full NFL license, so there are official team names and logos as well as player names. And this time, all of the 28 teams from the time are included instead of just 12. Now, before we stop playing, let's check out the game modes. There's Preseason, which is a single game that can be played with either a human player, the computer, or coach where you call the plays and the computer controls the action. Any combination of these three can be assigned for the game. Then there's Season Mode, which is pretty much the cream of the crop in this game. It's a full 17-week season modeled after the 1991 schedule, with playoffs and the Super Bowl. And the battery pack saves the game, as long as you hold the reset button in as you press the power button. At any point throughout the season, you can toggle any of the 28 teams to the player, coach, or computer assignments, while all the others will be bypassed in the game simulation. Not only does the game keep track of the win-loss records and organize the standings and playoff brackets and whatnot, but it also keeps track of player stats, league leaders, and team rankings. There are statistics out the ass. Another mode is a Pro Bowl exhibition with the all-star teams for both conferences. But the cool thing is you can go into the team data section and edit the Pro Bowl roster to your liking, choosing from any player in the game to build your own custom NFC and AFC all-star teams. The team data section also lets you browse through the rosters of all the teams, where you can view player attributes including their physical condition, as injuries occur in the game and they may cause the player to miss a few games. Because of this, you'll need someone to replace him, so the game included the backup players as well. But you can change the starting lineup around, even if nobody's hurt and you just want to fuck around with it or add some challenge to the game if it gets too easy. You can also change around the team's playbook, which is very helpful during the season mode if you're not comfortable with your team's plays. Not only are there a ton to choose from, but you can now have 8 total plays in your playbook, 4 runs and 4 passes, which is double of what you had in the first Tecmo Bowl. Speaking of plays, the game implemented some cool trick plays, like play action fakes, flea flickers, reverse runs, and a few other gadget plays to keep the other team off balance. The field doesn't take up the whole screen this time, and the view is further out, making the players a lot smaller. But there's room now, so you can not only fit all 11 players in the field this time, but you can see a lot further down the field, so you're not taking wild guesses as to whether or not a receiver is open downfield. Even when they do get off screen, you can see which direction the safeties and cornerbacks go, so you'll know who to throw to. The controls are the same as the last game, but they did change the kicking game a little bit. Kickoffs and punts both operate under the same power meter as before, but field goals and extra points now are run by an accuracy meter. An arrow shifts up and down, and you have to time the arrow to stop as close to the middle as you can. But you have to do this fast or you'll get it blocked. It gives the kicking game a new element and makes them more challenging, which I think was pretty necessary. Another part of the kicking game that's new is the onside kick. If you stop the power meter while it's in the blue portion during a kickoff, the kick will go short and a mad scramble for the ball will ensue. The kicking team won't recover it often, so it's realistically a risk that's really only worth it as a last resort while trailing right at the end of a game or if you're down by a shitload of points. Another tweak is that there are actually incomplete passes now. Not that they never happened in the last game, but it was pretty rare. So there are overthrows, batted balls, and drop passes this time around. A cool addition are the cutaways that take place during the game to magnify certain plays like a reception, blocked pass, interception, field goal kick, and others. Other cutscenes include the halftime show like last time, only this one includes animations and it's not always the same one every time. During the Super Bowl, there's a special halftime show which includes three mighty bomb jack clones that dance and fly around and then fuse together to make one big mighty bomb jack, what the fuck? The cherry on this Sunday is the soundtrack. 
the songs all kick ass and there are different songs for not only when each team has the ball but for each game mode too including a different set of tunes during the playoffs besides the gameplay songs there are some other notable tracks especially the one that plays after the regular season ends and scrolls through the final standings it really gets you in the mood for the playoffs a cool easter egg is the sound test feature that you can get to by holding left and b at the same time during the title screen Tecmo Super Bowl took an already great football game and basically injected it with steroids. No other NES football game even comes close to touching this. So that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.